going to be waiving any readings on this. Um, however, just so you know, the mayor has requested that the next time we read it, we would waive those readings. Um, we'd be getting rough uh, price of eight thousand dollars. Did I screw that up? Seventy-five. Okay. Seventy-five. Sorry, seventy-five hundred dollars. Uh, according to Mayor Hughes, that was the price we could get from the trade-in. And this way we're selling it directly to someone who needs it rather than to a dealership who will then mark it up. And then just as an FYI, the new cruiser should be here-ish Wednesday. We're hopeful. Uh, okay. I, it might be next Wednesday, but I don't, Wednesday at some point. This Wednesday or next Wednesday? Is that is that fully kitted or once we get it Wednesday-ish, then we got to send it out to get send kitted out? out. I, I believe it's sent out on Wednesday, as soon as we get it. Awesome. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns on that one? All no, right. that works. Moving right along, 2021-07, resolution authorizing the mayor and fiscal officer to enter into contract with AJ Asphalt to replace the asphalt path in front of the lake. This is, of course, that terrible, bumpy, lumpy, narrow, broken down path that goes there in front of the, the South Lake and up to the community center. Um, costs not to exceed 16500 which I believe is a little bit more than 10% over the estimate, but we are worried with some of the roots and trees that it could go over a bit. Okay, moving on. Resolution 2021-08, resolution authorizing and approving the mayor and fiscal officer to sign a contract with Flock Safety to install Flock cameras. Um, at a cost not to exceed 6,000. Um, I was not on at the safety committee. So if someone from the safety committee would like to speak just a teeny bit about that or somebody so we all understand what that is about. Well, they're uh, license plate readers. And I believe from the cost there, we're talking about getting two of them. Uh, you know, it records all the license plates that pass by it. You know, and it maintains a record for 30 days so that, uh, you know, if there's, and it also can pick out a car from its color, you know, so there's other ways other than just a license plate reader, reads the license plates and gets a description of the vehicle uh, so that we can try to, uh, you know, use that for policing purposes. I don't know. Can we we'll spend some time on this on in the Saturday morning work session, just so that way everybody's up to speed. Maybe we can get chief Delp to come and speak to it. Uh, Mayor Hughes. I, and I think he sent out to every, I don't know if it was to everybody, but he did send out a description of the, of the product. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what are they going to use it for? It's, it's a license. The license that, well, I know what it is, but the purpose of it is, Try to so, get bad guys. <laughs> I guess that's a blunt way to put it. Um, and just so you guys know, I can speak to quite, I, I had a phone conversation with them um, whatever day it was. So I actually did talk to him about it. He did send that information. I don't know that I did send it to everybody. It might've just been the safety committee. Um, I have no problem forwarding that to everybody just so everybody does have it. Um, it's like a 13 page sales brochure on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I did speak to them. So if anybody does have any questions, I think I can probably answer a good portion of them because yep. he went over um, a lot of it, how easy they are to move, or I should say how hard they are to move. Um, in that $6,000 budget, uh, for the record, it's $2,500 per unit, $250 to install. We got to 6,000 because I included two moves. Um, not that we will use them, but basically if we needed to move one, it's $250. If we want to use, move it, you know, if we find that it's not in the right location because we don't know exactly where we're going to install them yet, then we, we have two moves in a year. Does it have like a monthly fee on top of that too? I think no. no. Okay. All right. Yep. And we, we did all get those packets. I recall, I just know people who are maybe watching the movie did it and might want to know more exactly. about what that system is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's just under our, that's that's just looking to be regular scheduled thing. So we still have plenty of time to talk about it. All right, resolution 2021-09. Um, a resolution authorizing the fiscal officer of the village of Minerva Park to request a certification and estimate of revenue from the Franklin County Auditor's Office 
for a 3.2 mil five-year renewal renewal levy, a tax levy to declare an emer and to declare an emergency. Um, this one we are going to ask. I'm in a moment. I'm going to ask that we waive readings and pass as an emergency. Um, this is that first step where we just say to the county, "Hey, if we pass, if we were to put a levy on the ballot and pass it, how much money would it generate?" Um, and Mayor Hughes was saying that Franklin County has been kind of slow with paperwork of late, so we want to make sure we get that ball started so we can have that back in time mm -hmm. to make decisions on it. Completely agree. Anyone with any questions or comments on that? All right, so you know, and I'm going to move to waive readings. Second. All right. All right. Let's start with Councilperson Benedetti. Aye. Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp. Oh, am I muted? You're not muted. Okay. But we still didn't hear a vote. Oh, you still didn't hear my I I. There you go. Okay. I I I. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. And Council President Wolf. Aye. Got it. All right. We have waived the second and third meetings. I will now move to pass it as an emergency. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp. Hi. And Me. Council Person Benedetti. Hi. You'd think I'd have this in, in order by now. All right. All right. So that we is will get moving on that tomorrow. Implemented. All right. Resolution 2021-10, a resolution authorizing and improving the execution of a contract with Flowline LLC for inspecting, cleaning, and for inspection, cleaning, and video recording of certain storm sewers. Um, you know, we've just been doing this throughout the year. Um, I will just point out currently the cost is XX. Um, we don't have the full estimate on that yet, but it's thinking to be in the $15,000 range. Uh, but this is still just the first reading, so we will have more details as that goes on. We will have firm numbers before the work session. There you go. Uh, any comments on that? All right, next. And no, I'm not reading it twice. Uh, oh, wait, no, the next one's a different one. Um, resolution 2021-11, resolution authorizing and improving the execution of a contract with Resources Internationals, Inc. for a pavement condition assessment of the village streets. Uh, first reading tonight here, no need to rush it. Uh, once again, this is we're uh, pr predicting about a $15,000 price tag on that. And it's just having someone come out, look at all the streets, make recommendations about which needs fixed and what needs to be done to fix them. I guess my only comment on this and the last one is I think it's something we have to talk about at, the, at a street committee meeting. Not in disagreements, not in disagreements. And, and my view is we have all of April. So I would love to get that done before like mid April. So we can decide because right. we'll have all of the costs. I would say let's at least wait until after um, April 8th until we get all the costs. And that way, you know, in all honesty, maybe you pick one or two of them to do. I, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't disagree. It's a lot of money. I have some opinions about that. So yeah. am I still on the street committee? Uh, yeah, you are. There you okay. go. There you go. All right, here's the one where it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself. Resolution 2021-12, a resolution authorizing and improving the execution of a contract with Flowline LLC for inspection, cleaning, and video recording of certain sanitary sewers. Yes, the one before was storm. This is sanitary. It's just a first reading. We still have XX for price. Mayor Hughes says it'll also be about $15,000 is the expectation. That one I hope is less, but. Okay. 
All right, and I don't see anyone jumping out of their seats for that. Okay. Ordinance 05-2021, an ordinance to amend section 204.1 of the codified ordinances regarding the emblems and symbols of the village. Um, second reading here, this is the one saying that any major changes to uh, publicly displayed signage have to go through council. Um, we did talk about this some at legislative tonight and between now and when we see it again, we are going to have a uh, legal counsel look through it and make sure the wording is appropriate and correct since that's just wording that I came up with and I don't really know what I'm doing. So Jesse, I will send that to you tomorrow morning. Excellent. Or tonight. Well, I know what I'm doing about a lot of stuff, but not about writing village codes and ordinances and how they're supposed to be phrased. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Your first year. Yeah. All right, ordinance 06, 2021, an ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of the village of Minerva Park for the year 2021. We are not in a hurry on this one either. It's just our normal first reading. Uh, this is putting $16,500 into the capital outlay line. Um, you'll remember that figure is the amount it's going to, the top amount that we are expecting to spend to put in that repair that sidewalk walkway. This just puts that money in the capital outlay and makes those funds available. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Nope, that sounds fine. Makes sense. Awesome. Okay, now comes, so ordinance 142020. Now this has been tabled since October 26th. This is an ordinance to accept MI development reserve areas and declare an emergency. Um, again, we had a discussion about this at legislative committee tonight. Um, at least one, if not more than one council persons present said they want to see that punch list. If you remember, we tabled this until we could see the completed punch list. We were assured that the punch list is complete. Uh, several council persons wanted to see that list and see the checks on it. Um, so we are not going to untable this tonight, um, but we are bringing attention to this because at least one other council person was worried that since it's been uh, since October that we've talked about this, would we want to basically give people a reminder that this is coming up and put it back on their radar, which is what we're doing now. Um, so not quite a reading, but just a heads up to anyone who happens to be watching on Facebook. Um, in addition to that, this one will be a first reading, is Ordinance 07-2021, an ordinance to accept MI development reserve areas and declare an emergency. This actually cuts out, I believe, technically it's Section J on the map. This is, Section J includes the basketball court and includes that hill down at the end of Maplewood that our engineers have not yet uh, looked at and decided, does that need to be fixed before MI goes or not? So this is sort of the one little carve out of all the reserve stuff that we're not sure that they're finished with. Um, this is also one of the reasons why the basketball hoop has not been replaced. MI is willing to replace the basketball hoop for us, but they are not willing to replace it until we officially tell them that we're willing to take ownership. They don't want to replace it, have it get broken again, and then be expected to fix it again, essentially. Um, and that should I want to... Oh, go ahead, Tony. So this ordinance is going to take Jay out of what we're approving, what we're yeah. accepting? Yeah. Correct. Best way to describe this? Yep. So we're going to Except approve everything, everything but Jay? Yeah. Correct. Okay. That is exactly it. Um, and that has been read for the first time. And hey, that I believe is done. Yay. Okay, sorry, I know that was a lot, but <laughs> I think we all kind of really wanted to get moving on a couple of things, so. Yeah. Um, and we don't have another meeting until what, the 12th? Yes, and I think that was part of it. I mean, we're in March right now and it's gonna be you know, if we didn't read it right now, it would have been middle of May by the time. Cause I think our May meeting is also pretty late in the month. 
So, um, okay. So does anybody have, let's go straight to this. Does anybody have any new business? Well, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, I, uh, I'd like to, you know, talk about how we're going to handle, uh, Facebook complaints and that I think we're all aware of the issue with the, with the, I don't know, controversial traffic stop. And there's been a lot of discussion on Facebook and I'm, you know, it, it makes me think about, you know, a couple things that I think we need to talk about is, is how we handle these types of complaints and, um, you know, and how we go about determining what an official statement is and who, who decides what an official statement is. So this, this uh, issue that came, you know, came up recently has got me to thinking about our policing policies. So, you know, I'd like to, I guess, first find out, you know, how we want to go about healing because it's been said that no one's filed a formal complaint. So, you know, there's some hesitation on, on our part to say anything about this. And, you know, I, I understand that to be the case, but, you know, in the 21st century, you know, stuff going on on Facebook is as public a, you know, complaint as you can get, you know, so I'm curious to, again, as to how we're going to, you know, handle these type of things now and in the future. Yeah. Well, we could all be renegades and everybody come up with a different opinion. We can all put it on Facebook and make fools of ourselves. Well, <laughs> well I don't think there's anything stopping any of us from doing that at this, at this point. Uh, but I, what I'm talking about is that, you know, there's there's been a lot of concern brought up about this incident. And there's people that like to know what we think about, it. you know, and I'm. Oh. You know, I can I can sure do do like what you were saying, Joe, and go out there and you know make myself look like an idiot, and you know, but I don't think that helps well, us out any. If we go through the typical procedure, as to how we go about handling these types of things. Well, the the usual procedure would be if there was an official complaint filed, then it would not be disclosed, but there'd be an internal affairs investigation of the police and the complaint then that would generate a final report that would go to the mayor to maintain transparency, then that would be made public. Now, without an official complaint, I don't think we should, we can't address elements of things we don't have evidence to prove or know for certain, but just our opinions. Joe, you, uh, you might hit, create on, more hit on exactly, you've hit on exactly the point here for me is that you're right. You know, no official complaint has been filed. But that doesn't mean that there's uh, some concerns on behalf of the residents as to how we're going to go about addressing the situation. So, well, you know, I, I personally opinion, don't feel that ignoring this is the way to go. And I'm my, curious to my, hear what my, everybody else says. Think yeah, about. My, it. Well, my opinion would be, you know, to deal with the Facebook thing, that we could uh, have a statement about not the elements that we don't know about of this individual case, but we could have something that states it's the position of the council and the mayor's office or the village that we don't approve in any way, you know, racial profiling well, or any other kind of profiling and that this is going to be looked into. We will maintain transparency and uh, when we know what's happened, we'll, we'll get it out there. I don't know. What I don't know is if there's not an official complaint, then there's not going to be an internal affairs investigation, which has to come from the outside. Chief can't do it. Well, I think the chief can do an investigation internally. Well, until he could, but it's do, not do whatever he wants. Yeah, it's not official. I I think that the uh, this is something that is certainly uh, could be, and I think it's perfect for the communications committee to review because every business has this concern. And, you know, some businesses, of course, the large ones have a social media department to give feedback and, and they have a, a specific policy and how feedback is given. And I don't think we have to, you know, make that big a deal, but, but to have a step-by-step -step policy, when you see something like this on Facebook, you know, what's, what, would, what should the village do? And, or hopefully, I don't think you can make council people do anything uh, but 
I, I think you'd have an official policy and certainly the, the thing would be to get it off, to, to try to get people off, drawn off of Facebook by making a statement, uh, just a general statement, like when it first started, uh, the village has received this, you know, we can have a couple of generics. The village has received this information for updates. Go to the village website to this spot um, where you will find up-to-date information about it rather than letting it uh, devolve into a, who likes the police and who hates the police and you know, blah, blah, blah. They can, that can continue on Facebook if it has to, but at least the village says, I saw this. And I think that's, um, in a very informal way, that's what happened. I mean, uh, uh, I know that uh, the mayor saw it pretty quickly and um, things happen pretty quickly, but it would be nice to have something official. So when we see something on Facebook, we automatically go to this policy and it just walks maybe five or 10 steps that you take to uh, try to plug it, uh, plug it on Facebook or stop the, so that, people know that the village is seen, the village cares and the village is going to comment on it. But if you wanna see our comments and our final whatever statements, here's a link, go here and this will be all of our information uh, and get it off of, well, and that way it's more like official the, too. It it's like not just well, as far as the individual elements, okay. basically we, we should be kind so, of under a gag order. And we can speak so, about so this. if i may i think this getting is into detail right yeah this is this is a whole conversation that needs to either uh move to the communications committee which is uh, a perfectly reasonable place for this to be handled or go to a work session right if we want full council to be involved in the conversation right because i think tony if i understood your ask what you're looking for is a policy to be developed because I'm certain we don't have any such policy, right? Yeah. So either we need to uh, put that task to our communications committee to develop that policy for recommendation to the administration or recommendation to council to adopt, whatever that may be, or we need to earmark a future council work session to develop that policy as a council. I am indifferent as to which way we do that. Um, I think who is who's the current chair of communication? Is that Diane? Diane? Diane, do you have a preference on how we how we handle that? Would you like to take that up in a future communications? Yeah. I mean, meeting? if we think this is a sure, and if this is a priority, maybe communications can meet before the work session. If we can, yeah, yeah. If it gets I, a little bit later in the. See if you can schedule one right yeah. away. I feel like that would be and reasonable. We as, need to do the work session. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I do think it's inadvisable that we try and comment on any specifics of this when we don't know the facts. Well, well I, I think, it, oh, I think it's way inadvisable, but I mean, right. I, it's hard. The temptation is, gets to be kind of strong. Well, I, so well, I, I get that. If, if generally condemn racial right. profiling, I don't see any problem with that to say what the, you know, the, the village is. Well, that, that presumes that, that you know, someone, because you're on council, someone may think that you think there is racial profiling and you condemn it. Not that- Mayor Hughes has been raising her hand, doing her best to get a word in edgewise, <laughs> so if I might throw it to her. Okay, so just real quick, um, the village immediately re reached out to the parents. Everybody's aware of that. Um, we asked to meet with the parents. The, our Lieutenant met with the parents. This is a matter between the police department and the parents at this point. Um, Except that they put it on Facebook. And that was the parent's choice. Yes. So again, that was the parent's choice. So at this point, it is addressed. Um, these are children and this is as simple as I'm gonna go into with this. I mean, this is something between the police department and the parents at this point, the village and the parents. Well, I beg to differ in that it's, it's, fine. it's out there that, that, you know, it is, uh, the, the issue between the police department and the parents is over. Our the, the perception of our police department is not over, <laughs> you know, and and how they behave, you know. So to me, this almost I mean the way I hear people talking about this, it almost makes me understand why we got this problem in the first place, and because everybody wants to duck away from it. And you know, I I, I well I'd also like to know if you know 
you know, we talked about I, the reason I brought up an uh, official statement on Facebook is because I was told there was that we were working on an official statement because I want to know what happened. You know, and as a representative of the residents of the village, I expect an answer. You know, so, as far as I don't think I'm the only one in the village that expects some the village. I, I thought I thought that was bad. Well, the the family put it on Facebook. The resolution. I mean, the family put the whole thing on Facebook. The fact that they met with the mayor, and what their opinion was on what she said he said, and and where you know they finally landed on it. That's all on Facebook. Well, but it's not a statement from it's it's a statement from the lay you know family it's not a statement right. from the village so that to me it's not a statement on the village's standpoint it's a statement of from the you know the i, I thought just like well, yeah i i get your point I would just like to, i just like to see what businesses generally do and if they feel like something might be not libelous but something that would be threatening to the business or the reputation of the business on facebook or Twitter, whatever, what do they normally, what is their normal policy to do? Do they insert themselves in that feed or do they find another way to communicate com communicate what they want to without looking like they're just jumping in the middle of a hot mess? So I, I just like to do a little research to see what other people are doing. If it's out of lessons, they have they have a guaranteed legal right to privacy if they want it, just like they do in ju juvenile court or you know any other such matters. So we a lot of talk it, about someone's kids. I mean, anyway, why oh, would I'm, the village need I, to talk right. about the kids? Why would they do that? I, if, if I could jump so, in, I, I, no, I, again, I, mean, I just look, if I could jump in, quickly, I, I just I really agree with Councilman Wolf and the mayor that this should be taken up in a committee rather than trying to hash out particulars here. And we'll certainly get some research for you on. Uh, how other cities handle this in particular. You know, Facebook is a great tool, uh, but it is also a difficult place to monitor and, and to make sure every question is answered. It raises some issues. And so we'd always rather err on the side of caution, get all the facts uh, and get a policy together before trying to rush something out. So we're happy to get something together uh, and, and move forward from there. So that's kind of a gag order till we know something. Good. <laughs> well put, yeah. Jesse. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. All right. So, um, Diane, that's something that we can start working on, you know, because I, I am the biggest fan of, you know, this is aside from this conversation. I'm moved to the next conversation. Um, Facebook has become one of my biggest nightmares, not for anything that has to do with this, but. If I don't call somebody back about a tree, if I do call somebody back about a tree, like I cannot get people to quit private messaging me. Um, and that's just not an official way to do anything. As you guys know, I try to comment, please respond to mayor at minervapark.org, please, because that's how I have a record of certain things. Um, as you guys are fully aware, we get complaints with read attacks. We get complaints with the basketball court. We get complaints about speeders. We get complaints about the sewers. Those are, what, what do we want to do with those? All of that needs to go to a committee. So I am totally on board with getting, you know, the next communication committee meeting scheduled whenever you're ready, because I think that's a great thing to start talking about, because I can tell you um, that has probably been trying to get people to send emails or try to communicate in a different form, because it's, it's easy to sit behind a computer and say certain things, but it's not as easy for people to write an email. So it's, how long does it emails. take to set up a communications committee meeting? We should do it probably ASAP. Yeah. Uh, we can yeah. we can probably schedule it right now. We have all the members of the committee we, here. If you all have could. access to your calendars. Right. Uh, there may be lots of other people not on the committee that want to come for this one. There are there are only oh. three people on the committee. So those yeah. people can schedule the meeting and anybody else who wants to join can attend if they are able to. As everybody is fully aware, I invite every single one of you to the communication committee meetings. Um, okay, so if we wanna schedule a meeting, I'm looking at my calendar, if you all are looking at yours or committee members. Um, we could do it as early as this week if we wanted to do say Thursday the 25th or going into next week. Um, Thursday, April 1st. 
I can't do the first through the fifth. Okay. Mark, what is but your- I guess if it's Zoom, depending- on I'm off mute. Uh, my preference would be the 25th. The following week, I currently don't have any meetings and I'd like to keep it that way. Okay. Spring break. No. Joe? Maybe. Well, maybe we should have two. Maybe we should have one this Thursday to figure out what we're going to do at the bigger meeting. Well, the, tw the 25th then, are you available? And then when do we want to have it? Uh, well, I think things we like it. this can get out of hand. I, uh, I'm available Thursday. If we okay. can get something nipped in the bud, you know, and then. So six o'clock or, or seven? I or prefer earlier. six. Six? Well, uh, uh, I can do six. Okay, let's do six o'clock on, uh, Tiffany, does that work? Yes. Six we'll o'clock on Thursday, communication meeting. This, the 25th. Okay. And are I we will gonna, who, invite everybody. Are we going to need the chief to be in on this or legal counsel? Uh, or not? I don't think at this time. I think we'll be able to do this one and then we'll see where we are after that. Yeah, I, I think that's excellent. What we're looking to talk about it, that is a method for communicating statements and ideas, not necessarily, and not to, to put light on anything or say it's already passed, it's over, who cares? I'm not saying that, but it wouldn't be to address this exact situation. No, it is not to do, address this situation. It's to, it's to, yeah. How to get a, a process for addressing these type situations going forward. If we if right. we find that uh, addressing if we find that we have a methodology that we like for addressing these types of situations, then we can we can use then once we figure that out we can use this latest as an example and walk through it and see how we did against how we want to do, and yep. then I think we can uh, to Tony's point maybe then we'll have a way to communicate kind of put a wrapper around what just happened or not. But I think going through this exercise will get us to that point where we can figure out if indeed this, the village should and how they should make a final statement about this or any similar situation. God knows this isn't the last the last Facebook controversy no. we're going to. Well, that's, that's, no, I think I think anytime you're anytime you're poking the bear, anytime you're you're uh, you know possibly. Um, people are feeling like, whether you are or not, if people feel like you're trampling on their rights in any way, uh, and you can't hardly, I mean, just look at the people that are getting stabbed and punched because they ask people to put a mask on. I mean, that there's a, there's a lot of reason why you just wanna, you wanna sit back and be quiet, but you know, our police force is not paid to sit back and be quiet. They're paid to enforce. And when you enforce, or when you try to enforce, then then you run into conflict. It's part of it. It's just part of what it's part of it. What it is. So. Well, there there might still be an official complaint filed. See, uh, be, there's you know there's no statute on that. But I feel you like know we're, that, yeah, Joe. If I may, the thing is that I, the, the formal. Right. If I may, you I feel absolutely like we, right about the formal statement and that process. That's yeah, pretty are, straightforward. We are both in the weeds and in a loop. So why don't we? <laughs> We have, we have already made a plan to move this to a communications committee meeting that's been scheduled for the 25th. Uh, that sounds great. Uh, that was our first item of new business. So does anybody else have any other new business for this meeting? I'm gonna take that silence as a no. Uh, oh, and uh, Councilperson McNamara, were you, were you slow on the jump there? Do you have new business? No, I was saying I have nothing to contribute. I know Excellent. I haven't seen a whole bunch tonight, so I you I'd have say that. tons to contribute, just not at this moment. Uh, next, uh, old business. Does anybody have any? Sorry, Mayor Hughes, I I just took the reins here, but uh, I was no. ready to get Somebody moving along did. here. Uh, does anybody have old business that they would like to bring up at this time? Uh, if I could just jump in, uh, please. Oh yeah, sorry. No, no problem. The whole uh, so, reason I brought you. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, uh, Mayor Hughes, Leah, Kim, myself, and Emmett Kelly, who is uh, a public finance and bond counsel from uh, our law firm, had a call last Friday just to discuss uh, the MI Homes TIF, uh, the revenue that has been coming in over the past few years, and village options for that revenue. 
Uh, and so it was very preliminary, but we looped Emmett in just to sort of ask him the big questions. Uh, can the village start to borrow against that future income? Uh, and he was confident that provided any of the borrowed funds are used for improvements to the village that benefit uh, the new MI Homes community, even somewhat tangentially, as long as it you know, improved the community as a whole, uh, that we could do that. So we're going to start moving forward with those discussions. And we just wanted to let you know that those are happening so that you can be involved in however way that you want to proceed forward. If we want to borrow, you know, we still owe MI Homes some, some I think just north of $3 million on it. Uh, but there's just some great options because I think the, the preliminary numbers coming back are, are higher than even than anticipated. So just wanted to loop you in on that. I am not a TIF expert uh, at this point in my career, but Emmett is. And so if you have any follow-up questions, I can certainly get them all answered for you. Well, we could wave our hats and have a here here on that. <laughs> Isn't that what we do in I Parliament? Want see, I want to see the numbers. Show me the numbers. They in Parliament, they, uh, Parliament, they wave their hats and all go here, here. So I, I believe from a council perspective, our next step would be in a finance committee when we have some sort of idea of numbers that we're looking at, we would discuss that there. And thank you very much for that update, uh, Jesse. We greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, was there any other old, uh, old business that anybody had to bring up at this time? Well, I, I went. We I thought we wanted to ask Jesse about the. Is there a is there a time uh, timeline oh. on how long something can be on hold, in terms of uh, legislation? Yeah. Table. Oh, yeah. There, there so, is not. Uh, I'm sorry, table budget. Table. Yeah, yeah. There's, for color. You know, oh, go ahead, Jesse. You got in, it. In um, so for instance, like in Congress, where a Congress officially ends at a period of time. Uh, there might be some issues with that, but there is not in, in local village councils. The, the legislation rolls over, and so long as it is pulled off the table with the proper vote and motion, then it's it's eligible to be voted upon. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank uh, you. Are you on the email loop, uh, Jesse, with our system? Uh, I was not on that one, but I, I do receive most of the emails, so. All right, and with that, if there is there any other old business? No, but Jesse, I already sent that one legislation to you. Perfect. All right, then I am moving to adjourn. Back second. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, I had <laughs> forgotten I did. I forgot entirely, and thank you for reminding me, Eric Fisher. Um, I believe that there was a, an ask to adjourn to executive session to discuss uh, a um employee uh, yeah an employment employee matter uh and i need to get my specific language for that pulled up i apologize i surfed away from it i think it's just a move to go into executive session for the purpose yeah the you're supposed to say pursuant to, say to this yeah. Specific. This, that, and the other. Yep, yep. Uh, so at this time, I move to enter into executive session to consider uh, the appointment of a public employee as a pro permitted by Ohio Revised Code uh, 121.22G1. <laughs> and you just need to invite myself and Jesse in as well. Oh, yeah. And I am inviting uh, Jesse Champ and uh, Eric Fisher and uh, the mayor. I am just so everybody knows, I'm going to stop the Facebook live stream. Um, yeah, and, and, and stop recording. Correct. And I'm going to stop recording. Stop right. Do we have, a, we, have, we have to have a vote on it, though. Do I have a yes. second? Yes, yeah. yeah, second. Yeah. Okay, we have plenty of seconds. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. I think it has Any to be opposed? a roll call. It, 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 uh, uh, it needs to be a roll call. Though. Oh, it doesn't need to, oh, okay. it it does. to be a roll call, if you would be so kind. Okay. It's been a long time since I've gone into executive session. Councilperson Benendetti. Aye. Councilperson Curl. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Shrimp. Aye. Councilperson Brueger. Aye. And Council President Wolf. Aye. All right. Everybody hold for a second. We have to turn off the recording as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Okay. Because I got to figure out how to turn Facebook off too.
live on Facebook, stop live stream. Guess it's that easy. All right. And I am going, do you guys want, should I pause it or stop it? You need to stop uh, it. Or uh, pause, sorry, because no, you, you, you can pause regular. it again. I don't know if we need to start the live stream again, but I'm not doing that. It'll be, yeah, I think that'll get more questions than answers for people. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, we We're are live. recording. Yep, yep, we have resumed the regular council meeting, having adjourned from executive session. Uh, we have uh, reached the end of our agenda. So at this time, I will move the for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Oh, no, no, right. no. <laughs> Two oh, we're not on the live stream anymore. No, I'm not yeah. on the live stream. Okay, just for you guys to know, somebody, Columbus took the signs at Maplewood. Oh. I'm not joking. Like, yeah. Harvest is gone. What Eric's are you talking it. about? Were, street well, signs? What are you talking we about? Four, we had four street signs that were at the corner of Maplewood and Cleveland, right? So... What, what I think happened, and this wouldn't be out of line, is Columbus came by, you know, they, they have a streets people, and they said, oh, well, that's our sign, and that's our pole, and those, those, that's too many signs. That doesn't meet standards, and they would be right, except when I did the measurements today and, and did an overview of it, it's clear that pole is with our right-of-way jurisdiction, not there. So I'm in the process of making calls to tell them to get our signs back and stick them back on the pole. That's where Very we're at. good. So that was yeah, it. The are the signs at, at uh because they have that at Jordan and Park Lane. Ours are fine. You didn't see that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go Park put Park. little signs, don't touch. All right. And so I believe we have voted to adjourn. Uh, so everybody get out of here. Uh,